Thanks, Bill. Um, hi, everybody. My name's Rachel McIntosh. We called this meeting because we can see an emerging new consensus. This morning, we saw that argument get stronger. Uh, in the union, we have something that we say, which is there is strength in numbers. Actually, what we saw this morning is that there's also strength in diversity, and that was a diverse panel that we had this morning. We had an academic, we had the HERA research guy, we had a couple of employers, and we had the union movement, and there was consensus this morning that, as Louisa said, there is a crisis and something can be done about it. There is an alternative, and there was general acceptance that the alternative needs political solutions, so that's why um, these three lovely people are here. They're going in alphabetical order, five minutes each. I'm not going to make you work out the alphabet. I will tell you the first one up is Dr. Russell Norman from the Green Party. Uh, thank you, Rachel, and thank you very much to the EPMU for putting on this uh, meeting or conference, mini conference today. Um, it's great to be here. There's a, um, a book by Brian Easton uh, called In Stormy Seas, and he uses the metaphor that the New Zealand economy is like a sailing ship or a ship at sea in the middle of a storm. Now, that book was written some years ago, and I think that since that book was written, the storm that the New Zealand economy finds itself in is probably um, at a greater height than it was when Brian wrote that book. And yet, we are operating under a model which tells us that that boat has no one at the tiller. That that boat trying to sail its way through that stormy ocean under the neoliberal model, by definition, there is no one sailing or directing that boat. It's just wherever the winds take it. Wherever the waves, wherever the winds take that boat, New Zealand Inc., well, we should be think that is the operation of the market and that is the best possible solution because the non-intervention is always the best possible outcome. In fact, what we've seen since the global financial crisis, and of course was operating before, but has really come to the fore since the global financial crisis, is that country after country has required the intervention of their governments and their states in order to keep those ships afloat. In order for a small open economy like New Zealand to perform well, we need a degree or a level of intervention and working alongside by the government working with the economy. We cannot simply leave it up to market forces because we know what's happened if the New Zealand ink boat is simply left in the middle of a stormy sea. We've seen it in the form of, if you like, taking on a lot of water. Uh, we now have a net debt position of around 75% of GDP. Uh, we've had a current account deficit over the last years that has gone up over 8% and is currently at 5%. So that's the difference between what we earn and what we spend is around 5% or $10 billion a year, and it's growing. So is the net international debt position or net international investment position is getting worse. And so in the context of a world where many countries and many governments are actively intervening to support their tradable sector or their export sector to make sure that their economies perform well. And earlier in the day, we heard particularly about Switzerland, which is um, intervening in a very active way. In the middle of that, we have a, a pol current policy position which says don't intervene. Um, and the result of that is that the New Zealand Inc., this ship in this stormy sea, is taking on water. Now, one of the key issues uh, that has been in the debate over the last, um, last years, in fact, but particularly over the last few months, has been around the level of the dollar. And, of course, that's come up again this morning. Um, and I really appreciated the panel this morning and, and the words from the panel this morning. Now, the Greens put out a, a, a little proposal um, last weekend um, around intervening in order to put some downward pressure on the currency. The reason why we think that is essential is that our major trading partners are intervening to put downward pressure on their currency. And the effect of that is that the New Zealand dollar is getting higher. Um, we heard from Selwyn Pellet um, uh, for, uh, particularly about what happens to a small exporter trying to export when the currency gets higher and higher. A business which is otherwise competitive and doing well suddenly finds itself under enormous pressure. So that's why we put up the proposal around, there were three parts to it. One was about basically lowering the official cash rate and hence interest rates, which should put downward pressure on the currency. 
One another, the second part was about trying to control some of the, the asset inflation that might come if we have lower interest rates, so that's both capital gains tax and looking at loan to valuation ratios to control any kind of renewed housing asset bubble. And the third was around using the tools that are available in the form of quantitative easing. Um, now, it's been a little bit controversial, um, the quantitative easing discussion in New Zealand. Of course, it is being used very, very widely all around um, the world. Um, so this is um, a major policy implement that the United States is using, the United Kingdom's using, Japan's using. Um, so it is, in a global sense, a very mainstream debate, but it is an unorthodox debate in a New Zealand context. It shouldn't be. We need to have an open and mature discussion about what are the kinds of policy instruments we need to use as a nation to bring down the level of the currency and protect our export sector and allow the manufacturing sector to be the critical part of the economy it should be. The government says there's no crisis. We've lost 40,000 jobs in this sector over the four years to June. That is a major problem. We've seen a significant decline in the exports, uh, receipts coming out of that sector over the last four years, and a significant decline in employment. It is a major problem. A country which neglects its export sector and its manufacturing sector is a country which is building up more and more debt. And if we have a high dollar now, if we keep paying for all our imports by simply borrowing and selling off assets, then over time there will be a correction in the dollar, but it won't be a correction that we can manage or control. It's much better that we actually intervene now to manage down that level and to look after our export and trading sectors. They are critical to our future as a country. They're critical to jobs. This is a sector that employs a quarter of a million people, a quarter of a million jobs. It's a critical sector to New Zealand. And that's why we've been putting out some slightly, I guess, taking some political risks in around this debate because we think it's a, criti a critical debate to have. And it's a great pleasure to be here today. Um, I'll, I'll wrap it up there because I want to hear from both um, David and Winston and, and also from the audience here. But this is exactly the debate we need to be having. The debate we're having in this hall today is a debate about the future of New Zealand. It's not just about the manufacturing sector. It's not just about the export sector. It's about do we want to own our future or not? And I think that is the debate we need to have and it's great to be here.